March 3rd, Disney Toon Studios released its seventh full-length film in the Tinkerbell series, titled Tinkerbell and the Legend of the Never Beast. It came out directly to DVD and Blu-ray. Now, who better to talk Tink than the original reference animators model for Tinkerbell in the original Peter Pan film, Margaret Carey. Hey, hey, Margaret. Hey, hey, Margaret. Hey, hey, right back at you. Are we skywalking or what? We are skywalking through Tinkerbell and the Legend of the Never Beast. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Can you imagine seven movies in this series? Seven, that's right. And you, uh, But the funny part about it is people who, who have from way back when, realized that Walt Disney never did sequels. Oh, really? And how we're doing sequels of sequels of sequels. Right. And they're all adorable. They are all adorable. In fact, we wanted to thank you for taking some Tink time today to share and talk about Tinkerbell and the Legend of the Never Beast. Before we get into it, though, I think we should give our listeners a brief synopsis of the film. So Fawn, the animal fairy, befriends a huge and mysterious creature known as the Never Beast. While Tinkerbell and her friends aren't so sure about this scary addition to Pixie Hollow, the elite scout fairies set out to capture the monster before he destroys their home. Now Fawn must trust her heart and take a leap of faith if she hopes to rally the girls to save the Never Beast. Sounds like a nail biter. <laughs> I know. What did you think of this film? Well, uh, being a great grandmother, one of the things that I thought of was, Fawn, you're disobeying. <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking that's not really the kind of message that that the Tinkerbell movies want to send out. It worked out okay, and she was adorable doing it. Oh, she's she's almost as cute as Tinkerbell. Almost. Yes, almost. but not, not quite. <laughs> uh, in this one, it being her movie, really, Tink comes in in and out and helps out and gets hurt and a few other things that will keep you on the edge of your movie seats. Uh, <laughs> but the the main thing was, I think... The opening of the movie, because you didn't know where it was going, was absolutely could be just enjoyed on its own. That was incredible. Uh, before they really got into the story, it was incredible. And, of course, Fawn had messed up already. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean the part where she tries to harbor the baby a hawk, right? The hawk. The hawk. The hawk. Yeah. The hawk. Yeah. And, but I never knew that they would have... Uh, a, a troop that would go after this. The, what? What? Yeah, what the is scout, the name? Yeah, scout, scout fairies. fairies. Scout but like fairies. Jedi fairies. Yeah. Richard wow. and I were like, whoa. Those I mean, are to awesome. me, this is new. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were great. Yeah. They were just. They were just great. And the leader. And I'm sorry, I didn't catch all the names as it went through. Nix. Nix. Well, that was hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Uh, Let's call her Nicolosia because she's very, very female. At the same time, very aggressive, a real uh, leader, and they were going to take on this animal. But there was so much pre-story that was fascinating, and you thought, well, is it all right? Okay. And then the story actually begins. So once again, they know how to capture you, how to delight you, as you're watching the film. And so don't miss the first part of the film. I will tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, that baby hawk was so cute. I want one. It was. It I was. Want one. And I agree with you, Margaret. My favorite part of the movie, I think, after seeing it, is that first part where the Jedi fairies come out. <laughs> and I'm just going to call them Jedi fairies. <laughs> there you go. I, I, I would. And, and I mean, they know what they are doing. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would get behind them any time. <laughs> it was impressive. And what I thought interesting was the fact that they didn't kill the hawks. They just stunned them enough so they flew away. You know, this is well, a little I girl's movie. Well, I should hope so. Yes. This is a Disney movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, but Disney kills characters. Oh. Bambi's mom. <laughs> I'm sorry you brought that Nemo's up. Nemo's mom. Be fair, they only kill parents. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> the hawks must not be parents? Uh, Wait. Not yet. Baby hawk. It's a baby hawk. <laughs> and the, the little bunny rabbits were so oh. cute. They were just, uh, you know, you want to take them home. So I imagine they will be plush animals someplace along the way. Well, if you go to the Disney store, the Never Beast is a plush. I would imagine so. What do you do with his teeth? I don't know. I assume he is a he. Yeah, I would think yeah. a he. They never mention, but mm -hmm. but anyway, the the rocks 
the pile of rocks, the first pile of rocks were very interesting. I really don't know what that's about. What are you building? You know, it is my job as an animal fairy to understand and study animals. And the queen did say I should listen to my head. <laughs> I, I it took a know. while. I, I didn't know what they were. <laughs> yeah, so what the Never Beast is doing, he's building these towers, but you don't know why no, he's building these towers. No, this was even before that, when he just started pushing, then he pauses. Then he walks away, and there's a little pile of rocks behind him, and I'm thinking... <laughs> That's right. I'm thinking, uh-oh. <laughs> Did Never Beast have an accident? <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's I see. You, you didn't think there were rocks. You thought there was something else. The rocks yes, were brown. Because we didn't know at that point gotcha. that, that he was picking them up, and I'm going, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Any, anyway, we're picking it apart. And we, but that's the okay. idea that the whole thing was a legend is the thing that made it work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It really, really did, because you were saying, what is going on? Okay, I'll follow it, because... I tell you, the visuals are magnificent in this movie. <laughs> and I will tell you, the visuals in this movie is more than you ever expected. They didn't have to work that hard. No. It, it just, it, it sort of, I went, wow. Oh, the animation the, was fantastic. Animation. Yes, and yes. the beautiful colors of everything, just so vibrant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, it's a feast for your eyes mm -hmm. at the same time. But you could have cut corners. But you don't have that happen because Mr. Disney always said, as in, as in um, Disneyland, give them more than they expected. Yes. And you go, I still have people talk to me the first time that they saw the animatronics with Mr. Lincoln. It, it was a, a, a life-changing experience for them. Right. Well, who would go to that much trouble? Mm -hmm. Nobody else had. <laughs> so anyway. That's and, and it shows, too. Uh, yes. Which is why Disney remains number one and has been there for how many decades now? Definitely. I know for me, as as a little girl, if I would have seen these movies as a little girl, like I would have absolutely been in love with them. Like, uh, you know, I would just... You would go beyond that, yeah. though, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. At first, you wouldn't believe it, mm -hmm. and you'd have to see it again. And you say, it's true. I did see that. I did see I that. Know. And she did say that. And there was the fairy queen in there. And her dress is made out of... And did you see her, You know? You know, that, that, that comes full circle, mm -hmm. which is why they put so much attention and detail into this, because they know that kids... And little girls and little Sarahs will want to watch this again and again and again and again. So and you know really what? Get that DVD. I know a couple of ladies who are over the age of 65 <laughs> who will watch it again and again. And they want magic in their lives, too. Yeah. Very, very true. Absolutely. Very, very true. Now, how did you think this film stacked up over the previous six films in the Tinkerbell series? Well, it's so different. And that's what's so wonderful about it. My favorite film for the Tinkerbell movies, what I told you last time, The Great Fairy Rescue. I, because I love it that it's two different movies, and one is Tinkerbell and Liz trying to communicate, and we have problems like that in our life, and they just kept at it and kept at it, which I loved the way that they did it, and the fact that the scientist's father was a nice guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little aside. And, and then the action part of the fairies coming down in the rain. So what they do with these movies, and they've told me from the very beginning, each one of them teaches a lesson subtly. Yes. And to me, that's wonderful. I will put up with the fact that Tinkerbell went to work from 9 to 5. <laughs> I will put up with the fact that she lived in a room. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. I will put up the fact that she had a supervisor, <laughs> which <laughs> never entered my head before. But the point is that they're getting across these wonderful uh, teachings along with it. And this one was believing in each other, uh, and even though... Uh, she disobeyed. I don't know where that one is going to go, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but we'll put up with her <laughs> anyway. And the um, I think the queen understanding mm. what was going on, because we're used to seeing queens who are queenly, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Elf with her heads kind of thing. Right. But she isn't. She tries to understand. And then Nick, who is the head of the Je Jedi Warriors... <laughs> Um, Next, yeah. She, she at at the same time 
has to do her job, and she is is uh, dedicated to saving everybody and taking care of it as best she can. She sees the other side of it, and she lets it enter her brain. Oh, there is another side that I didn't see. Mm. That's a wonderful thing to teach kids. That yeah. too. There's a, a theme here that runs in the be- very beginning, and I wanted to see what your opinion was, where C- Queen Clarion tells Fawn, Fawn, I know you. You've always let your heart guide you, which is admirable, but, but I also need to listen with my head. Uh, you can't let one override the other. Hmm. So I, I appreciated that uh, line in the picture. My head and my heart are saying the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it's, that, it's that unique experience when they can finally align with each other. Because who doesn't wrestle with that same issue? We should yeah. try it sometime, don't you think? <laughs> on, a, <laughs> on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the things I wanted to bring up was... The movement of the animal, the great animal. The never beast? Yes, and I'm trying to think of his name desperately. Oh, uh, it's Gruff. Gruff. <laughs> Why couldn't I think of that? Gruffy. Maybe he could come with one of the dwarfs. You know, there's Happy and there's Doc and they could be Gruffy. Anyway, the point was that if you have heard the story about all the problems that they went to with Mark Davis being part of it. Of course, he designed Tinkerbell and Cruella de Vil and scenes from Cinderella and that when they were doing Bambi, it was that you, they were going, they, they even brought animals to the studio so that the animators and the artists could uh, could look at models and work them out. And he went ahead, of course, and did Flower and Thumper. Mm. which is one of the breakthroughs. Did you know that about? No. Uh, well, there was a big argument about it because Walt Disney wanted this real. He wanted this real. He, he saw that the picture that had been drawn, I think it's in the hallways at Disney Studios, of, of a real deer. And that's what... And he, they argued against Walt Disney saying, no, this is an animation company. You know, this is what we don't know. That's what... So... The story goes that Mark Davis went ahead while all of this was going on, and he came up with the characters for Thumper and for um, Flower, right? And the animators used that as an argument to Disney to say, this is what we do. Well, out of that came, holy moly, you can have different styles at Disney. Mm. And that's where it broke loose, right there. Well, when if you can watch this new movie, watch how he moves. I mean, it is incredible. Walt Disney would have given 10 years of his life, you know, to be able to do that back when he was making Bambi or Eddie. The, the move, the way he settles down and goes to sleep, the and you know and s- snuggles. I mean, this huge, incredible beast. Mm-hmm. And if you watch his back, how it moves like a, I think a dog is what they they followed mostly. But everything that he does is so you identify with it. Well, that's the artists at, at Disney of what they can do with computers right now. But I was thinking back to the time when they were actually having trouble getting animals to have their feet look like they were on the ground instead of above the ground. Mm-hmm. And here they've done it. I mean, yeah, you mean how he like, stomps around? Yes, and yes, how, yes. Yeah. Um, of course, I always, I always go back to the Jungle Book and, and some of the animals, if you, uh, and if you watch Mowgli, his feet don't look like they're on the ground. They had problems with that because mm-hmm. they were hand-drawn and all the rest. <laughs> and I, I, of course, I always ask when I watch that movie, love it, of course, why is there a bear in the jungles? <laughs> <laughs> it's always confused me, no end. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the, the technology and everything that they did in this movie, I mean, it really, really shows. Yes. Now, do you think little kids will be scared of the Never Beast? Um, He's kind of, kind, of, kind of scary at first. I think they might be more uh, apprehensive to what happens near the end of the movie, which we're not going to tell no, you. No, no spoilers. But it's visuals um, that are explosive. 
Let's put it that way. Right. And I think that that's, I think they'll identify with them right away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the other reason being, uh, I don't know, I've only watched it once, but I was so impressed that when we were introduced to this beast, the music behind it was not scary. If anything, it was very uh, drum drum heavy. Yes, yes. But but in a light way, lighthearted. I thought that was interesting. Yes. Yeah, so you you didn't you did get apprehensive and say, and then you saw it and you went, oh wait a minute, and the music did not fit any feeling of fear. Plus he was like this gray, gray and colors. But he had teeth. <laughs> oh, yeah, he did have teeth. Dad Zooks, he has teeth, mm-hmm. and then at the very end, he has a tongue that won't quit. <laughs> <laughs> Now, taking into account just this movie alone, what fairy would you identify with? Are you joking? Oh, okay. <laughs> I just wanted to ask the question. Are you joking? What, where has she been all of this time? Is it Tinkerbell? Oh, good guess. Okay, okay. okay well, good other guess. than Tinkerbell, yeah. would you relate with any of the other fairies in this film or even the yes, whole series? Yes, of course, the queen. <laughs> oh, okay. Awesome. I mean, I mean, let's go for it. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think Amazing. she's wonderful. She, I love her dress. I, I just can't get over it. And her <laughs> tiny little mouth. Oh, yes. She has the tiniest little mouth <laughs> that I can imagine. That was a big deal, you know, with Tinkerbell when Mark Davis was drawing her. Because you never, um, and you may not remember this, but in Neverland, A Return to Neverland, and Peter Pan, you never saw Tinkerbell's teeth. Mm. Ever. Hmm. <laughs> and in, in these movies, you see her uppers and lowers. And yeah. of course, they're beautiful. They look like <laughs> she's been to the, the dentist every other month. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it just sort of, I have to get used to the idea. Yeah. But I ne- you never see the teeth from the queen, I don't think. No. Because her mouth is so smooth. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And, well, the, and the other thing with the queen... I, if you know who Angelica Houston is mm-hmm. and have ever followed her, I think I said this last time, but I thought they were kidding me when they said that that was her voice. Really? Oh. I really did. Have you ever heard of her voice? I mean, which is like this, when it's commanding. I guess and all. so. And like in Ever After, she's the evil and, queen. And, and here she's just as soft and gentle. Mm-hmm. See, I can do the queen, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to ask you, Richard, do you have a favorite character in this film? I like the new character of Scribbles. Okay. Voiced by Thomas Lennon, because I love Thomas Lennon for one, but I think this was, guy was, was just... Was he wonderful? He, he was, was He was wonderful. really, he brought some very good, some, some great some comic real. relief. Yeah. And it was so real. And this is just the A's. You know, books are a workout for the brains. And the biceps. I love his square glasses, and he was like the... The librarian mm-hmm. fairy. His name was the, Scribbles, the, yeah. Yeah, he was a librarian, I yeah, guess. Yeah, the librarian oh, yes. elf. He was the head of the archive. Yeah. Who had a little really. thing for fun. Uh, but wow. I, just, I just... He had a little thing for all the fairies. He had a thing for Nyx, too, <laughs> when she came in. He's like, oh, oh. He's a smart fairy elf. Yes. You know, when you're talking about that in Back to Nick, I wonder if um, anyone thinks it's strange that your Jedi warriors are not male. You know? I don't know, because I it's all—it's really over f- for the females all the way through. Mm-hmm. There is no king. Of <laughs> That's the fairies, true. Right? <laughs> I don't think you would like that title. You have a point. Um, and um, the the fairy boys are called sparrow men. Yes, and so, uh, but I thought, oh, and not that she's masculine. Not that Nick is masculine. She just is takes control. She's very much like our our women who are in the armed forces. Mm-hmm. Are in, right. in America, true. and she's voiced by Rosario Dawson, and she's very uh, put together, organized, um, focused, which you can't say that about Fawn most of the time. No, not but, at all. But yet she is. It's animals. Mm-hmm. It's all these animals. Now I had read this was the seventh and final film in the Tinkerbell series, and you had read that. Yeah, I read that. I just can't see that as being a reality because it's Disney and they'll take it forever. Yeah. Now well, I think they're busy with Frozen. Now, mm. if, if they came to you and said, where do you want to see Tinkerbell go next? What would you say? I can't tell you because I realize that although I have a good creative mind, 
I was never brought up on fairy tales. I never even read one in my entire life. Um, In school, I went to Monticello School for Girls so that I could get a permit to get out and work in the movies, you know. So there were only 11 girls in my class. And our fairy tales were when we studied ancient Greece Hmm. and what the gods did. And we would roll our eyes every once in a while. Woo! (laughs) So I'm not used to, and I sit back in amazement and back to John Lasseter. I mean, he has this kind of mind that goes in the direction. Now, Walt Disney found fairy tales, Mm -hmm. if you remember, and signed up fairy tales that were already there. That's what I would have to do. Mm. Uh, You know, recognize your weakness, and that that would be my, my weakness with it. But what I would like to do with whatever they did with Tinkerbell in the movie, what whatever the, the storyline might be, I would like for her to bring more magic to people. Um, I think, I'm back to the, the movie, the legend of the never, never beast. beast. I'll get it, I'll get it, just stay with me. I'll be 86 in May, you know, <laughs> so stick with me. But, but one of the things that I wrote down because, and I know their, their, their problem here, all the fairies act like uh, teeners, mm. t- a teenage teen- and earlier, okay. as of today. They say, okay, okay, okay. As Alice Davis told me once, she's, she went to see the first uh, Tinkerbell movie, and we were standing out on the sidewalk, and I was we're holding on to each other, waiting for our rides to come. And she said one thing that Walt Disney would have done, he would have seen the movie from beginning to end and take out all kinds of, of slang. Oh, yes. It takes the magic away. Hmm. What, like what slang? Okay, okay. Huh. Uh, see you later. Oh, okay. uh, That kind of thing. Hmm. It would be more uh, Cinderella-like conversation he would stop uh, up in the rejection room he would say take that out he wanted it to be ageless so it wouldn't date it you look at some 80s movies they're saying things like tubular yes and okay that sets you right there in the 1980s not to mention their hairstyles and (laughs) well there were beehives before that i saw one the other anyway but i i kept that in my mind because i heard it several times It echoes in my mind. They really didn't have to say it. She could have said, all right, all right. I I mean, he wouldn't let anything go out of the studio until he had gone through it. Yeah. Well, now, before we wrap up, did you have any other final thoughts on the film? Um, Oh, don't miss it. (laughs) Uh, Absolutely. Don't miss it. It is charming. It's adorable. It's an adventure. You don't know where it's going to go. There are surprises. The visuals are marvelous. I am a little bit uh, discontented at how little Tinkerbell has to do in the movie, but she almost saves the day. Yeah. Fawn is adorable. The, the quote, monster, unquote, you can live happily with him, mm-hmm. and we're assuming it's a he. And... It just rolls on. I mean, the time passes passes so quickly, and I thought the music was really appropriate and really good. Yeah, yeah I agree. All right, good All deal. Right, now, yeah. before we, we really wrap it up, do you want to tell people how they can get a hold of you on social media? Why not? <laughs> okay. Well, one of the things that I would like to say, people ask me how far away we've gotten with Tinkerbell with the new seven movies from the way that she was originally. And I urge them to go back and get a James M. Barry original book, Unabridged. They will be so surprised because Tinkerbell talks in the book. Oh. It, was, it, was, um, it was written uh, six years after the play in 1911. And it's charming. You'll find out how mean the, um, the uh, lagoon creatures are. The mermaids, you didn't know that. (laughs) You didn't know a few other wonderful things in it. And so I'm going to give a plug. Unfortunately, I only have four uh, books that I've signed. 
of original Peter Pan, uh, not original James M. Barry, but, but unabridged James M. Barry, beautiful in blue leather with silver all over the cover, and I've signed them, and there's a picture of Walt Disney and Tinkerbell reading a book inside. But I only have four of them left, and if they want to go on my website, which is tinkerbelltalks.com, and see to it. They're not expensive, but everybody should read the unabridged to really find out who Tinkerbell is. Because I get all of these wonderful questions, and if they had only had the enjoyment of reading the book, they'll go, wow, I didn't know that. Wow, I didn't know that. So you can get it on TinkerbellTalks.com. And Facebook, I think it's Tinkerbell Talks. I'm, yes, I, yes, it, it is. is. Because you know what? I have to send my blurbs into a friend because my computer, and they can't figure out why, won't let me get on my own Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so uh, that's why I hesitated on that. And um, I think that's about it. Now, like you were telling us right before we started recording that you're taking classes in social media, so soon we'll be able to find you everywhere. Oh, yeah, and I on am, Twitter. And I am going to get whatever the server is to find out that I why I am not on can get through to Facebook. Yes, and um, so I am going to be brilliant because my new book will be coming out May or June, and it will be very different. It's called Tinkerbell Talk, so it's easy to remember. And TinkerbellTalks.com, Tinkerbell Talks. But it's going to not be in the form of a book. Oh. It's going to be in the form of a box. <gasps> How exciting. Yes. And uh, it's, it's a form that hasn't been used since the 1600s. I saw it at, in a, in a um, uh, historical society and I went that's what I want my book in and the book will be a collector's book and there will be room to put Tinkerbell pins in or if you get a picture of me that's signed you can put it in or if I write a couple of more chapters you can write for them and put it in so it will be a book in a box I think I know what my birthday present's gonna be this year <laughs> Yay. Uh, but as Walt Disney said, give them more than they expect. And I saw the box, and I said, I want one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you tell people where you're going to be next, signing autographs or shaking hands, saying hello? Well, I should be at the third Sunday in this month, and I, um, I will be over at Walt Disney's Barn <gasps> Okay, uh, over in Griffith Park on Zoo Drive, right next to the Steamers and Travel Town. It's open from 11 to 3, bring a little box lunch, and Walt Disney's Barn from his backyard is set up there, and the tables that he built himself, his own hats, his Baraxo dispenser, his mirror that he shaved <laughs> in looking in, and it's 11 to 3, and guess what? What? It's free. <gasps> What? It's the, and oh, and his railroad, his engines. How do you miss that? And it's the only um, Disney uh, gathering in the world that's free. <laughs> and it's the third Sunday of each month, and it's Walt Disney's barn. All right. That means it's going to be on March 22nd. Good. I'm glad you looked it up quickly. <laughs> you should have seen him, folks. He was scrambling, but he found it. <laughs> Right yes. here in Griffith Park in Los Angeles, California. Um, it, it runs, it's the street that runs uh, parallel to the 134 right next to it into Glendale. Riverside so, Drive. Yes, and Riverside Drive, too. All right, good deal. Well, All Margaret, right. thank you very much for joining us and giving us your thoughts on Tinkerbell and the Legend of the Never Beast. And if I may, I want to send faith and trust and a whole bunch of pixie dust to everybody. <laughs>